All right, well, now we come to the ultimate argument in comics for femininity. Wonder Woman, the fourth the fourth feature-length animated movie from, from the guys who are Warner Brothers. And this is regarded by many people as as being the first the first one that is really good and the other ones were not bad i like the other ones i like i like superman doomsday i like just sleep uh, new frontier and i like batman and gotham knight but in my opinion this trumps all of them in terms of in terms of its writing in terms of its voice acting and in terms of and in terms of getting to know the characters. This is basically an origin story of Wonder Woman, basically how it should be told. This this is a surprisingly solid script in a and it's solid in a in a very consistent way with some minor flaws. Like I said, this is an origin story of Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. So for for those who are uninitiated, I will I will lay out a brief uh, synopsis. In in ancient Greek times, there were the there were the Amazon warriors. The queen Hippolyta Hippolyta was scorned by the god of war Ares. So so there was this big battle, and and Hippolyta was about to kill Ares, but Zeus and Hera stepped in and said. And said, "No. Even though he has he has persecuted and, and treated your people with absolute injustice, enslaved your women, scorned you, we will not let you kill him because he is our son. So here's what we will do: we will make him powerless, and you will keep him as a prisoner. That will be his punishment. And we will supply you with an island called Themyscira." where you and the other Amazon women can live in peace and prosperity away from the outside world, which you seem to hate so much, and away from the so-called disease of man. Ares being the worst example of that. So, so with that said, Hippolyta... Okay, this is, this is where you're going to have to stay with me. Hippolyta, as part of the arrangement, the gods allow her to to sculpt a child for herself out of sand and with the drop of her blood brings the child to life and she names she names the child Diana so Diana is it is effectively a gift from the gods years later years later the Amazons are still training they they have become a very proud race of warrior women and Diana is perhaps the the most skilled among them so, so, yeah, she's, at first she starts out as this, she's never really known a, a man her whole life. She, she has just been fed all of these, all of these assumptions and all of these stereotypes by those around her, like, like Artemis and Hippolyta are, are telling her, you know, there's a reason we are on this island is because man is distrustworthy. Man is is completely wretched. He does not respect women. He does not. We we do not need man. That is why we're on this island for our own protection, and that is why that is why this magic mirror that was given to us by Hephaestus, I believe, the Greek god of forgery, Hephaestus, he built this mirror this magic mirror that enables our island to effectively be invisible to the outside world, so we are safe here. But Diana, of course, suffering from the Disney Princess Syndrome, wants to get away and and, and see the outside world for what it is. Now her chance comes when, when, a, when an American pilot named Steve Trevor crash lands on the island, while at the same time Ares is sprung from his cell by a traitor. So, so in her quest, in her quest to, in her quest to bring Steve Trevor back to his people, she is also swept up in a plot to stop Ares. And yeah, that is the basic premise. Now, 
what is what does this movie do well? Well, the voice acting. The voice cast is phenomenal. You have you have Carrie Russell as Wonder Woman, and she makes an excellent Wonder Woman. I mean, if if I were picking my favorite versions of the character, I think Susan Eisenberg from Justice League would still be my favorite, but Carrie Russell is a close second. With, uh, well, okay, if I were picking my favorite overall version, Susan Eisenberg would still be at the top, and with a and tied for second would be Carrie Russell in terms of in terms of her voiceover role as Wonder Woman. And she would be tied with Linda Carter in the Wonder Woman TV series, but I'm I'm getting off track. She's fantastic as Wonder Woman. She she lends a necessary softness softness and uh, naivete to the character, which is appropriate considering considering she has had basically zero experience in the outside world. While also she's believable as this very tough warrior who can who can handle herself, she's she's but even even considering the fact that she is a tough warrior, um, this is in part due to Russell's performance, she's still surprisingly likable and relatable because she's never really known anything anything besides what has been what has been taught to her on the island, how she's been kind of indoctrinated. On these on these lies and assumptions about man, and one of the movie's strengths, one of its biggest strengths, is her relationship with Steve Trevor and how and how the fact that that he seems like a decent guy basically challenges everything she has been brought up to believe, and that's something that the movie does subtly but effectively. So who else who else is very good? Well, we have. Uh, we have Alfred Molina as Ares. He does a good job. All, not really who I would have gone with, but it's nice that it that they didn't go for the for the uh, typical brute voice. They went for someone who has who has an aura of intelligence about his voice. And Alfred Molina Alfred Molina does pull that off. I mean, they could have easily gone for a Steve Bloom doing doing one of his evil Steve Bloom voices. In fact, Steve Bloom did play Ares in God of War, and he was boring in that game. He was so boring as a character. And I think that's really the fundamental problem with Ares as a character is because he's known as the God of War, so a lot of the time he's written and portrayed as very one note. And to a certain degree, that's still kind of a problem here, but... But also, you kind of see where he's coming, or you do see where he's coming from, in that A, it's part of his nature, and B, he wants vengeance on the world and, and, and Zeus as a whole for sticking him in an Amazon prison cell. So, he, he's a little better here, but I'll, I'll get to him in a second. Alpha Bellina does a good job as Ares. He, he, he lends humanity to the character, but... But at the same time, you believe that he is a genuinely powerful guy. Rosario Dawson plays Artemis, who who is unexpectedly humanized in this movie because Artemis is another Greek god, and she is Wonder Woman's sparring partner. She's Dawson. Dawson basically, like like about a lot of other characters in this movie, Dawson basically gives her. She she brings her down to earth. I mean, you can still tell that she's got she's got a very authoritative upbringing or an authoritative uh, demeanor and personality. But but what Dawson also brings to the table and what the script brings to the table is that she's not afraid to get her hands dirty. She is she is by by nature a huntress because that's what Artemis was. She is a huntress and. And that is conveyed reasonably well in this performance. So yeah, Nathan Fillion is also a lot of fun as Steve Trevor. Nathan Fillion is probably one of the most charismatic actors on on the small screen right now because he's he just oozes charisma. He he has all these one-liners, and they nearly always hit their mark. And I can see why a lot of people wanted him to play Nathan Drake, although 
think he's getting a little too old to play Nathan Drake, but I digress. He's he's fantastic as Steve Trevor. You really you really like this guy. You really like this this very. He brings the right amount of sarcasm to to the role where you can believe that he would. He's basically the guy you see the movie from as the audience proxy. He's he's the guy who who is completely unfamiliar with the Amazon way of life. He's the guy that people have to explain things to. And he's the guy who, just like the audience would, challenges all of all of Wonder Woman's beliefs that she has been brought up to, that she has been brought up with at this point. So, so he's a lot of fun. Like I said, he can be funny. He can be, but at the same time, he can be very he can be very human. I know I'm using that term a lot, but but you also buy him as this fighter pilot who would not leave a man behind. They do a really good job of portraying Steve Trevor as, yeah, he's a sarcastic guy. Yeah, he uh, he's he has a lot of wits, but when he needs to get serious, he will get serious. He knows when to shut up. So, very inspired casting and very inspired performances all around. What else works about this movie? Well, the origin story and how and how straight they play it. They they play this completely straight. This this kind of reminds me of how they did the Thor movie, except this came first. This came in 2009, I believe it was. 2009. This came this came 2 years before Marvel's Thor. I don't exactly know. Well, yeah, Wonder Woman still came first in the comics, but I digress. Or at least I believe she came first. Whatever. But but what this movie really does a good job with, and something that Thor kind of emulated later on, is is that they introduce you to this very fantastical world that could easily alienate the audience. But they portray it in a way that that not only makes it makes it believable as, as having been around for for centuries, but also but also, it it pays necessary homage to to real Greek myths, to to actual Greek society. I mean, it's kind of stylized because of a because of the comic book. Like I said, the like the like the outfit, the Wonder Woman outfit. Um, that's that's obviously not really what Greek women wore, but but you you really buy what this movie sells. This hardened society of the Amazons, their their previous and and at the same time subsequent wars against the the hordes of darkness in the form of Ares and the minions of Tartarus, and just how straight they play it and how and how big they can make this action feel. The large scale battles in this are very solid and and like I said, the movie does convey a lot of this stuff really well and like I said this is the type of stuff that is so out there and so fantastical that you can easily alienate your audience and this movie does not do that if you are completely unfamiliar with Wonder Woman I still think this movie is pretty accessible I mean you obviously won't get as much quite as much out of it as someone who is a who has been a fan of Wonder Woman but it's more accessible from as as a standard movie than say Justice League New Frontier was because Justice League New Frontier I liked it but it did feel like kind of a mess this puts the focus on one character one protagonist and it tells a very very good origin story there's even a bit there's even a fun little bit of social commentary thrown in mainly in the conversations again between between Diana and Steve one exchange I really like is when Steve saves Diana, when he, when she says that she should have, when she says that he should have stopped Ares because they they get defeated and he takes her to a hospital. He he gets her out of there instead of trying to stop Ares by himself. And she says, "What? Why? Why'd you do that? You should have stopped Ares. I bet you would have. I bet you would have stopped Ares if I was a man." And he said, "Okay, you've known, you've known me for like one day." And you think, and you think, based on me, you can, you can judge every single man out there. I saved you because I do not leave a man behind. 
So that was a very interesting exchange, and that's not the only interesting exchange that they have. So, so just the fact that this movie does tackle tackle issues of femininity and uh, gender inequality. Now, I'm not saying that <laughs> I'm not saying that this movie panders to to a female audience. I'm not saying that this movie is as cut and dry as as say Avatar was, where Avatar said basically had there was no gray area in Avatar. Avatar basically presented the noble savage and the evil, terrible, technologically advanced white man. Here, here it doesn't really it doesn't really portray these two sides. It doesn't really portray either side as completely right. And you have these these conversations that feel real. They feel they feel relevant even in this modern age. Especially especially when 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 this one anonymous chick tries flirting with Steve and she says Oh, I dropped my pen under the desk. Could you be a doll and get it for me? And and Wonder Woman's like... She lifts up the desk, gets the pen, and she's like, Is this what you were looking for? So... So little exchanges like that really help sell the social commentary on this movie. Now, what doesn't work? Because this is not perfect by any means. What doesn't work... Well, Ares, yeah, I praised Alfred Molina's performance, but the way that Ares is written and, and the acts that he commits in this movie, you there's just not enough menace to this guy. He's not a very menacing villain in the grand scheme of things. He spends a lot of his time getting the, getting the crap kicked out of him, or, or as a prisoner. He... He doesn't really do enough to establish himself as an intimidating villain. I mean, a lot of his menace comes from Alfred Molina's performance, not necessarily how he is incorporated into the main story. I mean, we could have gotten gotten to know his conflict more, but instead, instead being a relatively short movie, again, this is just about as long as the other movies, 70 to 80 minutes, we don't really we don't really spend so much time with him because we are busy spending time with Diana and Steve. We're not we don't really get to see his plan develop as much. We're just kind of told like oh these random acts of violence around around where Ares escapes. Ares Ares basically inspires hatred and violence wherever he goes and that subsequently makes him stronger. It kind of violates that old rule of show don't tell. So, so just I don't want to say he's ineffectual as a villain, but he doesn't really spend enough time dominating others. He he spends a lot of his time getting dominated by others because he's defeated by Hippolyta at the beginning. He has to ask Hades, voiced by Oliver Platt for some reason. He has to ask Hades to to uh, take the take Zeus's chains off of his wrists so that he so that he can reclaim his godly powers. He's he's smacked around by Wonder Woman on multiple occasions and the only point where you actually feel that he could that he stands a chance is at the end when he's getting stronger because of the big battle because like I said he feeds off of violence and hatred because he's the god of war obviously. That's the only time that you feel that he is a legitimate threat. To, to to Wonder Woman, at least in a physical confrontation. Because he because he grows into this twenty foot giant. <laughs> that is the only time he feels like a legitimate threat. I mean other t other times not so much. I mean he's serviceable as a villain. But he could have been better. He honestly could have been better. Instead of just adequate. What else what else is wrong with this movie? Well, this goes back to the runtime. This movie, along with a lot of other DC animated movies, has one has one fundamental problem. And it's that it's too short. This movie really should have all of these movies are begging to be longer. These movies should have honestly been 
closer to an hour and 40 minutes, or maybe, maybe even two hours in some cases. Because, because the relationship with Wonder Woman and Steve Trevor, especially toward the end, feels kind of brushed. When Steve, like I said, like I, I liked that conversation in the hospital, but then, but then Steve said, I saved you because I care about you, Diana. Maybe I figured that the world was not worth saving if you're not in it. And that came immediately on the heels of him saying, you know, you've known me for what, like 15 minutes? So it basically, it sabotaged itself in that it directly pointed out my problem with this, with this, with this uh, dialogue exchange, which was, how can he build a relationship like this with this person in one day? Especially someone who is this distrustful of man. Now, considering this is an animated movie, and animated movies tend to be shorter, and also taking into consideration that Disney has done this countless times, I really, sh I suppose I really shouldn't be that upset, especially considering all of the, all of the very interesting scenes that these two have together, but overall, it, f like I said, it feels rushed in the grand scheme of things, and for something that is being marketed to to an older audience it feels oddly it feels oddly juvenile it feels oddly I'm trying to think of the word it feels it doesn't really this particular development doesn't really feel very mature and it kind of contrasts with with a lot of the other mature content that is trying to tackle here like I said with the social commentary and whatnot but overall none of these minor flaws deteriorate from from the overall positive impression I had upon finishing this movie. This is a very good, I don't even want to say Wonder Woman movie, it's just a very good movie and I recommend it to anyone who to anyone who has had even a passing interest in Wonder Woman. The performances are are excellent, the story is strong, the mythology is interesting, the action scenes are phenomenal. I mean, that's another thing. The animation keeps getting better and better on these animated movies, and the action scenes are filmed, are filmed thankfully without shaky cam, because it, was, it would be kind of difficult to do shaky cam in an animated movie. But the action scenes are, are brutal. They do not hold back, or at least not much, because there is that occasional scene where they cut away when they chop a guy in half, but whatever. The action scenes are do feel appropriately powerful. You buy the power of these opponents like Wonder Woman and Ares. So yeah, taking all of those positives into consideration, it's a little hard to to not recommend this movie because of a slightly a slightly lackluster villain and and a slightly underdeveloped uh, romance. So yeah. And and that being said, I'm not even sure how much of the fault for those was to blame on the screenwriters, considering this... They may have had a deadline, may, or they may have had a limit on the amount of time that they could that they could have. Maybe this was done in the cutting room floor. Maybe... <laughs> I'm, I'm just speculating here, but maybe they, they had a... Maybe the studio specified, okay, this cannot be longer than this than this time, than such and such minutes. So I don't know, but with that being said, it's a, it's a very good movie, and and it's a it serves as a very well done introduction to Wonder Woman. And this actually began a long streak of these movies being consistently solid, as opposed to the hit or the relatively hit or miss nature that that the previous ones had. So. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I recommend it. And in retrospect, in retrospect, I probably shouldn't be wearing my Batman shirt when talking about a Wonder Woman movie, but I'm already done with the video. So, yeah, go see go buy the movie.